Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned. GA ASI conducts successful lightning test on MQ-9B. DARPA funds Liquid Pistons 30 kilowatt X4 rotary diesel engine prototype. And Syracuse, New York Fire Department launches drone program. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned Program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AEVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. General Atomics Aeronautical Systems Incorporated uses second full-scale MQ-9B to conduct successful lightning tests at its facility in Poway, California last month. The test was conducted jointly between engineers from GAASI and NTS Pittsfield. MQ-9B is GAASI's latest evolution of GAASI's multi-mission Predator B fleet of remotely piloted aircraft. The same lightning protection technology will be used by GAASI for its proposed MQ-25 unmanned aerial refueling tanker for the U.S. Navy. A scaled lightning current was injected onto the aircraft structure, simulating a direct lightning strike. The current flowed along the aircraft structure and exited from a predetermined return location. Results from this test verify the effectiveness of this lightning protection design for the MQ-9B. This full-scale test is important to confirm the interactions between the airframe structure, integrated equipment, and cabling configuration, since all of these factors into the lightning protection design of the aircraft. GA ASI named its baseline MQ-9B aircraft Sky Guardian, and the maritime surveillance variant is called Sea Guardian. MQ-9B is a certifiable version of the company's MQ-9 Predator B product line. A weaponized variant of the system is being acquired by the UK Royal Air Force under the Protector RG Mark I program. In the next Unmanned Minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. A number of remotely piloted aircraft designed by students at the Amsterdam University of Applied Sciences completed their maiden flight at a facility of the Netherlands Aerospace Center. The flight tests were part of a third-year minor called Design, Build and Fly at HVA. The flights took place under NLR's responsibility at the Netherlands RPA's test center. Two of the four aircraft successfully completed all elements of the flight test. The Department of the Interior has awarded a first of its kind contract to Boeing subsidiary Institute to provide fire suppression services within the contiguous 48 states and Alaska using its Scan Eagle unmanned aircraft system. Per the contract, Institute will support manned aerial operations, including fire suppression, search and rescue, emergency management, and other operations, as needed on a call when needed basis. Devron UAS Corporation has launched its drone data services in the U.S. market. Devron will be offering drone data services to the partners across the U.S. Midwest, where there are some 127 million acres of farmland. Leaders in agriculture continue to look for new ways to derive data analytics for their business. Drone Data offers new application for analytics, and Goldman Sachs sees drone applications evolving into a $100 billion market by 2020, with agriculture playing a significant role. Plans have been unveiled for a new headquarter for Chinese drone giant DJI, which is currently under construction in Shenzhen. As the heart of the innovation for the company, the new building defies the traditional idea of office space to form a creative community in the sky. The buildings are being designed by architectural firm Foster & Partners. The Twin Towers combine sensitive research and development spaces with office and other public functions. That was our Unmanned Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. DARPA has awarded an additional $2.5 million to internal combustion engine developer Liquid Piston to continue work on its 30 kilowatt X4 rotary diesel engine prototype, bringing DARPA's total funding of the engine technology to $6 million. Liquid Piston received this award after meeting the objectives for Phase 1 of the program. 
The objectives for the $2.5 million Phase II of the program are demonstrating 30 kilowatt of power and reaching 45% net indicated fuel efficiency from the .75 liter X4 prototype. Phase II also lays a foundation for future work. When development of the fully packaged engine is complete, the 30 kilowatt X4 engine is expected to weigh just 30 pounds and fit into a 10-inch box, while achieving 45% brake thermal efficiency. Exceeding DARPA's objectives for the first phase of the program validates the potential for an entirely new category of military-grade rotary diesel engines, said Alexander Skolnick, CEO and founder of Liquid Piston. We believe military forces advanced and autonomous air, sea, and ground vehicles would benefit from a new power platform, which is compact, lightweight, and burns heavy fuels efficiently. And liquid piston technology could improve mission endurance and payload or increase the mobility of higher power electric generators, added Skolnick. The Syracuse, New York Fire Department has launched a drone program that will be used to help fight stubborn fires and those that break out in large commercial buildings. Fire Captain Timothy Gleason demonstrated the drones at the department last week. The department began looking into using drones last June and applied for FAA authorization to use the aircraft. The department was approved by the agency earlier this month. The drone to be used by the department is equipped with a thermal imaging camera that will help firefighters identify hot spots where roofs or other parts of a building might collapse. Gleason said that they will not be used to find people inside of a burning building because the technology is still not up to that task. Syracuse Fire Chief Michael Mons said that the program cost nearly $20,000 to establish, but he expects the cost of maintaining the program to be much lower. The department is training 10 drone operators to fly the aircraft. Well, that's our program for this week. In addition to this program, our Airborne Unlimited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tweet us. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero newsnet And more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned at auvsi.org and airborne-unmanned.net. We'll see you next week.